first ever Zoom uh, broadcast here as we all try to figure out our new lives and the new normal. This is something that we're trying. We've got some some willing participants here being uh, our, our test guinea pigs tonight as we try to dry run this thing and see what happens. I'm Rob Rains, SDLSportsPage.com. Joining to us from our headquarters in St. Louis, we've got a bunch of people online here scattered across the globe. We're going to introduce everybody and then we'll kind of get uh, get going with some talk and questions and things like that. So just going across the top here and the way that they joined in the call, our first guest is Brian Garner, lives in Imperial, Missouri. He's a super Cardinal fan, was down in spring training when everything kind of went wonky. So I'm sure he's got some opinions on uh, on everything going on. Next to him is Mike Reeves. Way when I reintroduce you guys, so then you can, uh, people can see who's who. Mike is uh, a little farther south than uh, Brian. He's in uh, Farmington, Missouri, and he is our uh, – Works for SDLSportsPage.com as our broadcast guy. He's the guy that provides all the interviews and things like that after the game. So Mike and I are the co-hosts normally of the Cardinal Rewind show after Cardinal games. And this uh, this might be something that we try to uh, use to replace that show here if we can make this work. So he's, uh, he's joining us. Mark Miller is on the uh, next row. That's him over there. Mark is a guy that I've known forever. He lives in uh, right outside Washington, D.C., in Virginia, big Cardinal family. He's from St. Louis. He's actually the father of a MLB call-up umpire, so he's got some opinions on what's going on with those uh, those guys and, and uh, obviously a big baseball fan. So he's Mark. And then Glenda and Bruce are in the next picture. The Glenda and Bruce are in uh, Florida. Bruce Wolf, they live at uh, the Villages in Florida. He was also down in spring training this year, so they're big, uh, they run a, a big fan club for the Cardinals down in their, uh, in their community, so super fans as well. Patty Wood is in the next picture. She lives in Washington, Missouri. She's a, a big Cardinal fan, was a former teacher at Lindbergh High School, BJ and Mike's teachers, and I think she's still a season ticket holder. One of the only people I know on this screen whose trip to London has been uh, scuttled this, uh, this summer. So we'll have to talk about that. Um, and then next to her, this is a guy nobody else knows, but this is a friend, new friend of mine that we met this spring uh, online. This is Mark Burns. He's actually joining us, guys, from Sydney, Australia. Span oh, all over here. Great. Mark Mark is a uh, the father okay. of Jake Jake Burns, who is a uh, Cardinal minor league player, 16 year old kid they signed out of Sydney, Australia last year. And actually, the last story I did for from Florida before we left for spring training was about about Jake. So he's going to fill us in on everything that's going on down in in Australia. And then our uh, our last joinee here uh, coming out coming to us from outside. We're still daylight. Although I guess it's day daylight in Sydney, Australia too. It's actually noon tomorrow sure. down there. Uh, is B.J. Rains, our uh, oldest son, who lives in Boise, Idaho, and he's uh, he's joining us as well. So that's who that's the cast of characters that we have joining us here on the on the program. So I think I first, B.J., you're muted yourself. Oh, BJ, I just said I can't stay on very long, but I just wanted to say hi to everybody and wish you the best of luck with this. Yeah, we're all dealing with uh, some strange times right now. So uh, so I guess first of all, before we get started, Mark Burns. I, What's the situation like in Australia? I mean, we don't see a lot about the things going on down there. Is it as bad there as it is in other parts uh, of the world? Probably no, no, nowhere near as bad. Um, we've got about 6,000 cases nationally, which, you know, in the scheme of things is pretty low. Um, we've had about 60 deaths, which is unfortunate, mainly the elderly. Um, but the majority of cases seem to be coming out of cruise ships. Uh, hmm. and people returning internationally on flights and things like that. The actual spread um, from person to person that haven't come from those two sources are pretty low. But uh, we, we hit it pretty hard really quick, you know, in terms of social distancing, shutdowns and things like that. You know, the maximum group of people that uh, can socialise is two, um, and unless it's, of course, in, within your family. Um, your family's called your bubble and, and that whether it's four or six in a household that remains the same but once you leave your household maximum number is two people so your so, other, I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt you you're right. go ahead I was gonna say your uh, other son was playing high school baseball too is it is is he able to play that or they, they no we, we were pretty fortunate our uh our grand finals pretty much coincided with the just with the start of this. So we got our summer season completed, which was great. But um, our winter season is typically, which coincides with your summer, is typically our representative season. So pretty much all our representative baseball, which is, you know, the little league formats and things like that, is all put on hold, which is uh, quite a shame um, because those kids have been playing all year, training all year, really building up for the little league, uh, little league series. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's all on hold at the moment. 
it's just crazy. It's just crazy. Mike Reeves, uh, you and I, you know, spent a lot of time together at the ballpark and I, or at the hockey rink or any place else. And we haven't, I'm glad to see your picture because I haven't seen it in a long time. So it's, it's been such a crazy time. What, what's your take on everything that's going on? Well, initially, I'll be honest with you, Rob. I thought at the beginning, I thought, well, this is probably being a little bit overblown and it's a little bit too much in terms of all the shutdowns and the leagues doing what they did. Um, I'm not well versed enough medically to make that determination anymore. I mean, it feels, it still feels like that there should have been a way to maybe get the, the games that we love so much going and played. But then you look at the restrictions that are put out there by the government and by health organizations, Rob, as long as those restrictions are in place, as long as you've got numbers of people that can be in a one place at the same time, whatever the number is, as long as that's in place, as long as you have the, situation where if you test positive you're going to be quarantined and then anybody you come in contact with needs to be quarantined as long as all those things are going on Rob, we're not going to have sports as we know it there's not even a prayer of it and i don't see the governments or the health organizations changing those things anytime soon there's no indication that that's going to happen and it has uh, obviously altered like it has for you and anybody that's in the sports reporting field altered my life significantly my calendar that i keep here at home uh, is blank and bare. There's nothing on it because there's just not much to do at this juncture and, and, and at this time. And it's been a rough go. I'm not going to lie to you. You could like do some other things on your calendar, like, you know, laundry, mowing the yard, you know, just so you have something listed down there. You know, Mowed the yard today. It wasn't on the, I didn't have it on the, uh, on the calendar, however, but it is done at least for the next uh, three or four days. I do want to get everybody's takes on what's going on. Before I before I do that, though, I do want to thank uh, the sponsors, bestjellsportspace.com. We've kind of kept us in business while we uh, go along here through all this uh, this nonsense. And it's uh, Carpenters Union, AEC, Drury Hotel, Slyman Brothers, Norman Burns, Lumber and Hardware, Crawford Butts Insurance have all been very loyal sponsors with us for a long time, and we can enjoy their support. And that's why we can able to still bring you free content here on the site. And hopefully, everybody's kind of you know going to get through all this thing together. Mark Miller, you've got kind of a vested interest in this, and I know you paid attention this morning when. The, the kind of news reports first started coming out about possibly doing a, a, a mass uh, camp of Arizona and all the teams playing down there as the father of a MLB call-up umpire who worked a lot of big league games last year. What's what's your take on that possibility and, and how that would affect your son? Well, we have a uh, we have an umpire here at home that's bored out of his gourd. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he hasn't trying thrown, to find you, out, he hasn't thrown you out of the house, has he? No, we've uh, we got him mulching the we got a major league umpire mulching our backyard for us. What do you think of that? Um, and so yeah, he got you know when when spring training broke, he he uh, he actually stayed down in Florida for a week because the place that he had rented was already paid for, so he didn't see a real reason to rush home. Um, and a couple of his buddies stayed down there with him, and then since the, since he's come home. Um, it's all he's doing is working out and trying to stay in shape. And they get him, you know. Yeah, and and I, you know, I've lost. I, I'm a high school umpire, and of course, lost the whole season there. And uh, I'm also my regular job is the meetings world. I do trade shows for for a living, and that's all come to a screeching halt. And uh, there's a lot of angst going on in that world, trying to decide whether to postpone the meeting, cancel the meeting how to cover it, whether your insurance that you bought that you thought you'd never use will actually cover your income on the meeting side of things with the associations we work with. Um, and my wife's in corporate training and her business has screeched to a, a dead stop. So it's, it's, it's affecting us here in Virginia on a lot of different levels. Well, what's everybody think about the idea of playing all the games in one kind of part of the country, quarantining the players, not having any fans, the games will be on television. I mean, does anybody have a, a opinion one way or the other about if that's the, the right way to go about it or what are the, the, are the risks still doing that greater than the possible reward? Brian Garner, what do you think? Uh, actually, I'm for any sort of modifi modified schedule that they might play, however they may do it. But I don't see how the owners would agree to doing that with no fans in the stands because they can't make any money. Right. And people may get the wrong – fans may get the wrong impression that players are only doing this for themselves so they can get paid with no fans in the stands. Uh, I know base, sports at its core, whether it's Little League being played 
over in Kirkwood. They have concession stands and all that because they need to raise money. You know what college athletics is like. Pro is the same way. It's a business. I, for all these years, I've been a fan since the early 60s. I still think it's sports. But I, I, I would be for whatever they want to do, but I don't know that that might work. Bruce, you got your Cardinal mask on. Is that uh, yeah. what, what, what message you're trying to send here? That's what they're, they're going to play with that. Down here in Florida, we're taking this very seriously. You know, while I live in a retirement community with 130,000 other old people, so we take this seriously, and our fan club has these masks made. So we're ready for this. So what do you think about uh, the players possibly coming back and playing as early as May? Well, I, I agree with the uh, – well, I, I agree. Uh, that I, I, I'm just, well, actually, I just don't know. I mean, I just don't know. That I don't see how it's really – they talk about putting them in a bubble, but it's not really in a bubble. you got all the players together. you got first base, third base, second base, people going in, sweating on each other. Hotter than hell in Arizona. I mean, how in the heck are you going to play day games in Arizona? And Bruce was telling me that they're saying that they would put the players in different places in the stand so they wouldn't be near each other, but they're going to ride in a bus together. <laughs> Well, and they can't all go in and shower at once. Yeah, one they're all going to be in the locker room at the same time. Just think of home plate: the umpire, the catcher, the batter. You know, they're they're all right there. It just doesn't it doesn't make sense to me to do this at all. It just sounds like they're just trying to figure out what they can do, though. I think they're also trying to generate conversation. I don't really think they're going to go through this. I think it was just a "Hey, we're still out here" kind of moment, and they're just throwing that out there. But I always have that kind of thought sometimes too. Well, so. I agree, Patty, because the sports pages are pretty slim day today. You're right. And as, as, as you hear all the time, especially with actors, they say any kind of publicity is great publicity. You know, they all want to be in the forefront. So. Well, I would think Mark, the umpires would have to be, have a say so on this too, right? I mean, as far as, you know, I know they always say the Players Association, nothing will happen without their approval, but you got to, even if they're using an automatic strike zone on a home plate, you still got to have umpires out on the bases and calling, you know, the other kind of plays and stuff. So I would think they've got to have a say in this too. You know, with, with uh, my son's position um, as a call-up umpire, he's not really in the quote, no, of what exactly the umpires are doing because he's officially a triple-A umpire that gets called up to the majors when needed. So, uh, like, when spring training got canceled, he didn't even – he learned about it through the press, and he found out later through his official channels. So he doesn't really know how much influence the umpires would have. I would, I would agree with you, Rob, overall. It does make total sense. The umpires completely have to be on board with this. And there's, of course, working next to that catcher behind home plate, for nine innings, I I almost wonder what the li uh, the legal liability would be if they decided to do something like this and somebody got sick and and really got sick and and passed away or something. That would just be horrific that they had what? pushed the envelope and that had happened. I you know, and and BJ BJ had a story on Twitter today about an assistant. I think it was a football coach. It was, and he had a pic picture of him. BJ should tell that story too because that guy didn't. That guy looked like he was about thirty years old, and he said he got really sick really fast. I'd like to hear the details of that story. Yeah, BJ had to leave us unfortunately here. So he, uh, yeah, but I, I can't. Uh, I have, the story will be online later tonight. But yeah, he did. He had a co they had a conference call with one. He covers for those of you who don't know, BJ, my son covers Boise State athletics in Boise for the newspaper out there, and they had a conference call with one of the assistant football coaches today, and they were all basically all done doing the interview. And so he had shaved his, he, he had a beard and he had shaved and somebody said something to him about why he shaved. And he basically said, well, cause I had to do it cause I tested positive for COVID-19 last week. He kind of oh, threw it out right at the end of the conversation. So it ended up wow. being, but he, he said he's feeling much better and, and got over it, you know, pretty quickly. Yeah. So it's, you know, I think um, the umpires are definitely concerned. I did see one thing today and I don't know if there's any truth there or not that one of the things was saying, if they do go through with this, the players, the players at least will have to sign a waiver not to hold the league responsible if something happens. And I can't see them doing that. Uh, no. Hey, Rod, I'm kind of yeah. curious what, what you would think and even everybody else here today, though, if, if it came down to this, cancel the major league season, it's done, there is no 2020 season, or they find a way, whatever the way is, to play with no fans, to play every game in Arizona, which would be preferred? 
just cancel it completely or at least play games and have the sport available. It'll be obviously on television for 99% of us. We're not going out to Arizona. Would it be better just to ditch the season if the only option was play everything in Arizona and play it without fans in the stands? Would anybody have an opinion one way or another? Would you just assume see baseball in some form or if that's the only way they could do it, ditch the thing? My opinion is that they could do it, but I would not want it to count like it's any real baseball. I mean, to me, it almost has to be exhibition games, right, just for something to, to watch. I don't see how you could count it as a legitimate season, in my opinion. I don't know what everybody else thinks. Uh, I, I agree. I, I don't know how they could do that. Also, we've lost so much stuff. Again, depending on what they do and the legal liability involved, I'm – I'm starving for something. I've lost spring training. My daughter-in-law plays professional women's football. We've lost college sports, spring football. I'm dying for something. So if they come up with something, whether they get rid of the virus and they start the season, they modify what I'm all for whatever they're going to do. Because I miss baseball terribly. Mark Burns, you've got a stake in this too. I mean, your son's not a major league player, but obviously the minor leagues are going to follow whatever the major leagues probably do. What What do you think about your son going out and playing in a situation like like we're talking about? Yeah, I th- look, he's a little bit different being isolated in Australia at the moment. Um, he The hardest thing for him will be to get back. Um, you know, there's really no international flights coming in or going out of Australia at the moment. Um, that would be his biggest challenge, I think, and not just Jake. All the min- all the minor leaguers that are that have been sent back to Australia at the moment, they're all in the same boat. Um, that's the biggest issue that they've got to contend with. And it seems like the minor leaguers are kind of all, oftentimes the left out people in this this party. You know, I mean, people realize they need to play this year too if they can. But you know, we yeah, know well, you know, the Cardinals. You know, as you as you guys all know, you're massive Cardinals fans. They're a great organisation, and uh, you know they've been checking in on Jake every day, just for a health update. Their strength his strength coaches are contacting him a few times a week just to see how his workouts are going. The communication has been unbelievable. It really has. Good, Patty. You've uh, you've had season tickets for a long time. What would you think about playing games with no fans or just on TV or canceling the season? You know, I'm not in favor of the playing in front of no fans. And I, I think the bigger pictures, I mean, I miss it big time. I mean, I had tickets, you know, for opening day and I have them again for Thursday <laughs> and I keep looking at them and going, well, um, I just think the bigger picture is so much more important. We don't have a vaccine for this. We don't have a cure for this. You know, there's just so much other, uh, believe me, I miss it big time, but I just keep looking bigger you know, the option of playing in front of nobody or not playing at all, to me, it's, you know, I don't, I hadn't thought of that option, but I just think the bigger picture is so important that I'm worried about that, so. There's I do think, too, it's, it's, we don't know about this virus. Yeah. And they keep saying they may come back again in the fall, too. I mean, it's like, yes. I keep hearing references to that. So, I, you know, I think the worst thing you could do is start up again and then have to shut down again. You know, I think, I think that would be a, a terrible thing. So, but I think, too, it's just, I, I just think the risks of, of something going wrong in this kind of scenario, because, I mean, how, where do you draw the line? I mean, you're, people, they're staying in hotels, okay? Well, the people who work in the hotels, you know, they have to clean the rooms. They have to, you know, but, you know, bust the tables and the, you know, if they have, you know, table service, whatever. I mean, you know, room service, you have to bring the food up to the rooms. I mean, there's just, you know, somebody has to drive the bus that they're taking from to and from the ballpark. I mean, there's just so many extra logistical people, you know, not even talking about the media and what role that, you know, the media would play in, in all of this, you know, and, and you can't quarantine everybody. You know, I well, just, uh, none, none of us are going to be invited to the commissioner's office to make this decision, but here's the, the one thing that nobody's, that, that nobody's willing to go, whether it be the NHL, the NBA, whether it be baseball, at some point, there's got to be, they've had to discuss kind of a drop dead date of mm-hmm. saying, if we can't do it by here, is it even worth it? Just amongst everybody here, do you have in mind a realistic, if they haven't played a major league game by this date, just it's not going to be worth playing? Is it July 1? Is it in sometime in June? Could they start in August and play a very truncated, small, smaller sample season? Is there a, in your guys' minds, kind of a drop-dead date that if they're not playing by this date, I just don't see any sense in playing at all? To me, it would be the all-star break. 
middle of July. I, I don't think if you can come back, if you can't come back by then and not in, uh, in Arizona, but come back playing regular games in front of fans in major league stadiums, I, I don't think it's worth it myself. Yeah, I agree with that. That's the drop dead date in my mind is the all-star game, especially if there's a chance that we have to shut it down because this comes back in the fall. So, you know, I, I kind of, when I heard the thing, the reports on ESPN and then the other information that came out today from MLB about what they're doing, I'm very close to this virus situation. I am in rehab medicine. And I know of a person that has tested positive in the medical community. And what you should see, what I have to wear to see patients. Uh, it's amazing what we have to do. I am so... I am so tired of washing my hands. I am so tired of wearing a mask virtually all day long in our office. Uh, I mean, changing gloves. I feel so sorry for these nurses and these frontline people in New York that have the marks across their noses where these masks have actually bruised them because the mask I've been wearing for the last couple of days is torture. So I'm not so sure that MLB and or the powers to be have in any way been affected or know what's actually going on out there with this virus. Now, I'm not afraid of this virus because I know what I can do to protect myself. And I have to go to Illinois tomorrow to our other office. I've got six patients to see tomorrow morning, but I've got plenty of PPEs and other things to protect me. So I'm not afraid of it, but I'm not so sure Major League Baseball has really got a grip on this thing. You know, and like Rob said, I can't imagine the Players Association signing off on signing a waiver not to hold MLB responsible. I just don't see that happening. I just also think that a lot of the major league players, those guys that are married with young children, they really want to want to be quarantined but in a hotel by themselves for four and a half months away from their Agreed. family. Agreed. I, I Agreed. Just... And, and like for me right now, when I, you know, I am staying separated in our house from my wife at a socially acceptable distance because if one of us gets sick or if both of us get sick, Who's going to take care of us in this house? So we are social distancing in this house because of this mess, mm -hmm. you know? Wow. So. And I think, I think too, I mean, I, the one thing I know that people talked about is that and they, they referenced World War II, they referenced, um, you know, 9-11 and things like that about how baseball could kind of be a healing kind of, process and bring the country back together and give the country something to to enjoy and stuff but i i also think there's a downside of that if people are playing baseball and there's other people you know dying from this disease and in, in the you know right. streets of new york it's just it's kind of hard aren't your kind of priorities kind of misguided a little bit i, exactly. I, I don't know. well and, as and, much as i love baseball and as much as it's my world it has been for 40 years i mean i just i just feel that way agreed and look at 9 11 that's a perfect example of what you just said Baseball was a great way after a small window to bring America back from what happened in New York. This is totally different. This is some this is something that will that will kill anybody. There's a nursing home in the St. Louis metropolitan area that has been overtaken by this virus. 47 patients in a nursing home have been affected by this and tested positive. 5 have died. I don't see how Major League Baseball can put this on these guys, like you said, Rob, with families. You know, yeah. nobody and, and cares I, about you like you do. So, and I feel sorry for the the players. I mean, I feel sorry for a guy yeah. like Adam Wainwright, who potentially this could be his his final season, and to have it wiped out because of this would be horrible. I feel sorry for uh, like Mark Mercer's son Jake, and for you know some of the other young prospects, you know, Nolan Gorman. Matt Levator, uh, Dylan Carlson, who they need to go out and play. I mean, they need this is a critical year in, in all of their developments. But you know, if if health and and safety has got to become the biggest priority, as, as much as we hate to to say that. Agreed. I agree. Mark, Mark, what do you, I mean? You're you've got a vested interest in this. What? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and you know, there's no doubt that um, certainly the measures that are un, in, being undertaken in Australia at the moment 
is is working. You know the the, the you know they talk about flattening the curve. Well, that's exactly what's happening right now. And the more we do that, and the more we encourage it, the better it's going to be for everybody. Bruce, what kind of things have you? I know you're a, you're a devotee. You're watching every game when they're on TV. What have you found to occupy your time when uh, when there's no Cardinal baseball? There's not much going on. We we're down here. We're still playing golf. But everybody's very careful. Everybody drives their own cart. We wear masks at times. Uh, so we play three times a week, and that's we walk three miles. And that people, I mean, it's amazing people walking all over this place. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And we stand uh, six to 10 feet apart from each other. You know, on the, only one person goes up to the tee box. We don't put our carts close together. So um, that's the only outlet that's outside other than jogging and walking and biking that, that, you know, that we have. So, and I mean, it's just, the, we have 370 people in our club and it is just broken their hearts that we've had to cancel all the activities. But gosh, when you look at the big scheme of things, lot, to be alive and to stay in life is so much better than to go to all those things. Those things actually become trivial when yeah. you think about life. And I think, you know, Mark, you and Patty, I mean, too, I mean, everybody just, we miss it. We like to get back to it, but, you know, it's just, I, I don't know how, you know, what daily conversations you and your son have about it, but I mean, it's just got to be eating, like, you know, you want to stir crazy, but he also has to understand the, the big picture here, right? I mean, as far as. Absolutely. Yeah. Mark Miller, you, you agree with that? I do. I, well, I also want to make a comment about the 9-11 analogy, because I, I, boy, you know, we lived through that. But the, there's a difference, a couple of differences there. With 9-11, you had a couple of communities affected with Pennsylvania, D.C., and New York. But when it was over, it was through, you were trying to recover. You knew when it was over. You knew it was a horrific day, and, and you moved forward. This, we have no idea when this is going to end. And it's affecting, of course, the whole country in different, you know, stronger in areas, some areas than others, of course. But we just... We, you know, I, I appreciate the comments on here of different people talking about the big picture because it, it, you really need, do need to sit back and look at this because without having a, uh, an, an end in sight and no idea when it's, when it's going to be and the fact that it could, you know, reoccur more in the fall because we don't have a vaccine for it and we don't have one coming in the near future, um, it, it's just, just so many things up in the air. It just makes it more difficult. Patty, what do you think? I agree with everything that's been said. I just, you know, I have I have nieces and uh, that's a nurse in Colorado. She's currently not working on the floor with any um, virus people, but I also have a niece who's at John Hopkins University who's working on a PhD in chemistry, and she's um, trying to work to get a grant to help with a vaccine or something like that along those lines. So that's very hopeful and encouraging, yeah. but. I just think the big picture is huge. That's, I, I just keep thinking about this. This is very trivial. I agree, but gosh, it sure would be nice to have it. <laughs> yeah. And we don't want, I mean, we, we know one thing, if they're playing games, we're all going to be watching. And I yeah. think that's what, that's what baseball is weighing, you know, too. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm sure they're getting pressure from the, the networks to try to, you know, put games on to something that people, we all, you know, have whatever programs we're watching on TV, you know, and, and that's really, for everybody staying what they're supposed to be doing and staying at home that's that's really what you're doing is is watching tv and we're all getting kind of bored of the the shows we're watching but it's uh you know and, and i guess you know maybe they want baseball to be the first sport to come back but and it's a different situation you know the nba the nhl their seasons were basically over i mean they got almost all the regular season in obviously they're missing out on the, the playoffs and things like that but uh you know i, I kind of put them in a different category than i do really you know baseball because that's kind of the one that was just about to get get rolling. It's hard. It, it, as long as you know the last several weeks have been, it'll be a month month on Sunday that they pulled the plug on spring training. Doesn't it seem like it's been a lot longer <laughs> than that? To Eight weeks. Yeah. That? Well, they're still having the draft though for football, right? They're going to do that somehow. I read. Isn't that the correct? Draft is going to be done this uh, April twenty fifth. It's going to start. It's going to be done in a conference call format. And I saw some of the scouting people. They said are going to be working from home. Work, working, you know, basically on text messages and emails and stuff with the, uh, you know, their scouting departments, but they're not even going to be huddled in a, in a uh, meeting room. I really think that's why baseball came out with something today because the football people came out and said, we're still going to hold our draft. And the baseball people said, Oh, we got to come up with something. We got to keep people in a, you know, in the news, but 
maybe I'm just naive about that stuff, but I don't know. And base, the baseball draft is still going to happen too, apparently, but it's going to happen. We don't know if it's going to be June. We don't know if it's going to be pushed back to July. What I have heard is that basically it's uh, it, it's going to be a five round draft if they're not playing and a 10 round draft that they are playing. And that's going to be, uh, that's going to be it. And everybody else will be, you know, results will to sign will just become free agents. And there also is going to be a cap on how much they can sign for though. So that's going to be, uh, that, that, that's going to be, you know, crazy. So hey, anybody who's, uh, who kind of tuned in here is, who's kind of not, not one of our uh, participants in this uh, test run here on the STL sports page versus zoom uh, baseball talk program. We're going to be doing this again later. So check the newsletter and you'll find out when the next, uh, next one's going to be. And we'll get you the information if you'd like to join us as well. So all you guys have been, uh, been very willing uh, participants here in our, uh, our trial run of how this thing is, uh, it, it's going to work. It's, it's, uh, it's been fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed, enjoyed it as well. Cause it's, if, if we can't play sports, you can't watch sports. At least we can still talk about it. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. You, always, you can always talk, Rob. We know yeah. that. That's just the nature of what we do. And and I was thinking, you know, there's some good points being brought up about the other sports. We're kind of baseball oriented here in this group, and and it's always been my passion. And you know, as a reporter, what I've loved the most. But I start thinking more and more if the NFL starts to say that their season will be impacted by this. Football is still a king sport in the United States as far as the dollars and everything else is involved. And if I start hearing things that even preseason games are going to be canceled or they're going to play them and try to play you with no fans, if the NFL goes that route, then baseball is in trouble in terms of trying to get anything going because you know that the NFL is going to be the one that if somebody's going to play, they're going to be the ones that's going to be the that, that it's going to happen with. And if they start making adjustments, I've got real fears that baseball would have any prayer of getting back in anything even close to what we're used to seeing it be. And what I've heard about speaking of football, about college football, is that if the thing to watch is whether uh, schools are uh, in class in, in session for summer school, because if there's if the classes are not being held at the universities this summer, there's no way they're going to have football players on campus to uh, to start you know summer drills and get ready for the, their season. And that would that would as much as Brian Garner misses baseball, if there's no Mizzou football this season, I, I, uh, I, I think we have to have a watch party for him to make sure he's, he's okay. How many, how many games have you seen in a row for Mizzou football? Uh, actually, I have, not, I have not missed a home game in 13 years. The last, two, the last two out of four years, I've been to every game they've played. I've already got flights booked for this coming season. Uh, right now, I'm headed to every game they play this year. You will need to have somebody put me on suicide watch if college football does not take place. That is my that is my pride and joy, and I love it more in life. Mark, Mark, what uh, are they are they playing some sports down in Australia or not at all? There's no, no nothing at all. No, our our football season's on hold as uh, as as everything else. There's absolutely nothing. Um, you know, it's it. Golf is great. Uh, a lot of people out walking. We can't go to the beach. All, most of the beaches are shut, so there's no swimming or anything like that. Um, so yeah, it's really limited to what we can do right now. Hey Rob, here's one yes. for you. Yes. Speaking of spring training, you know that's my pride and joy being down there. As soon as they cancel that, I have never swung a golf club in my life. As soon as spring training games got canceled, my wife and daughter, they could go to the beach every day. And they talked about maybe wanting to come home. I said, no, we're going to be here 11 days. We're staying here. I went to a golf course down there with a buddy of mine and just hit balls, have something to do. The next day, we went and played 18 holes. I've never swung a golf club. I went and played 18 holes at the Jupiter Dunes. Two days later, I went back by myself and played 18 more. Two days later, I went back and drove some more golf balls. As soon as I got home on the 21st, went to the grocery store, got up Sunday morning, and went and bought me a set of clubs. <laughs> I am absolutely now you're hooked, huh? hooked on golf. I cannot <laughs> wait to play here at home. I'm dying for it. And guys would tell me, you're going to get hooked. Well. Book, line, and sinker. I'm all in. Are the golf courses closed there in Missouri and Illinois? No, they're not. In fact, since I since I put it on Facebook that I was kind of playing a little golf, I've had nine guys contact me wanting to play golf. I had a golf date one day with my son, but out of respect to my wife, we canceled it. 
because I've been, when I got back from spring training, I was quarantined for two weeks because I'm in rehab medicine. So I canceled another golf date with a buddy of mine. After I bought those clubs, they were used, but they're a great set of clubs. Got 13 clubs, bag and covers for $45. Wow. Anyway, anyway, I, I put a cup in the living room, got out 20 golf balls and started putting every day in my living room. I bought some plastic golf balls and went out in the yard and was chipping to practice that. There's a driving range about five miles from my house that I've been to four times. So the golf courses are not closed. Uh, the driving ranges are not closed. The only thing I can think of is that they know people are separated by potentially two or 300 yards, depending on the length of a fairway. But I'm surprised they're not. But it's killing me not to go. But I don't want to jeopardize and people find out, you know, you're supposed to be housebound when you're not working. And I am in an essential job, yeah. if you will. But I don't want to jeopardize anything and get in trouble with anybody by going and playing golf. But I'm dying. I'm dying to play golf. If you play golf like I do, it'd be the most, it'd be the safest thing you could possibly do because I don't hit it where anybody else ever goes unless it's into somebody's backyard and I have to run in them, run, run into them there. That'd be there, safe there, for me. There's only one per there's only one person in this group here who has seen me play golf and we're going to mute Mark Miller's uh, microphone so he can't talk about my <laughs> golf game. So. Hey, when I, when I first played that 18 holes, I made it very well known to a couple of the uh, marshals and people in the store. You know, when you're hitting on a driving range, it's like a cow pasture. It's wide open. Well, when I got up to the first tee at Jupiter Dunes, I was terrified because there's a row of condos and homes on one <laughs> side. And about 70 feet on the other side is a road. I was scared to death. I hit the first drive right down the middle, which was, I couldn't believe. I honestly was hoping I would break 200. I shot a 103. Wow. Never played before. And then two days later, when I went back, I shot a 93. So I think I got something going on here. So I think well, don't, take any, don't take any lessons because that'll screw you up. Well, and you know what? A, a guy at the, uh, one of the guys that work at the driving range where I go, he says, you know, if you ever get a little extra cash, you ought to take a couple lessons. Absolutely not. Because I swing, a, I swing left-handed, but I swing a golf club like a baseball bat. I use a baseball bat grip. Really? I'm, I'm, I'm hacking. So, no, I will not take any lessons that will really screw me up. Do. I don't need that. I have a, I have enough issues on my own. So I, w I want to go around and get uh, get a kind of, kind of final parting comment from everybody here before we uh, kind of wrap up this program here. So we'll start over in Australia where it's uh, you know early afternoon tomorrow. Mark, uh, what what's your kind of overall view of things and what do you think is going to happen and and what do you what do you hope happens? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, firstly, hey, great to meet all you guys. It's uh, been an absolute pleasure to be part of this group today. So thank you. Um, look, you know, we, we, we've seen some really good things happening. Uh, we're very positive that the, you know, the steps that everyone's taking is working. Um, and look, I think in the next four to, four to six weeks, we'll see things slowly, you know, getting hopefully a little bit more back to normal. Not completely. I don't think it's going to be completely back to normal for six to 12 months, to be honest with you. But, um, the, you know, the restrictions will slowly be eased, I'm sure. Mark Miller, what do, what's your prediction? What do you think is going to happen and when? Well, again, th Rob, thanks for inviting me into this. And uh, Brian, uh, I've never met you before, but I'm also a Mizzou alumni. So um, I, I followed you on Twitter, actually. So I'm glad to actually hear you talk finally. Um, I got to pick, better, I gotta I pick think better people if I get all these Mizzou people on here. I got to do something about that. <laughs> um, I think it's just going to be a very, very slow process. And we're going to be well into the fall before things start to even uh, feel back to normal. And I'm afraid we're going to lose the baseball season completely. Yeah, I, I do say I want to say too that uh, we had a, bu a bunch of other people who wanted to join us and be on the program, but they didn't work out time-wise or conflict-wise. So hopefully we'll be able to do this again soon. And if you guys have enjoyed it, we'll get you back on and have a few other people as well. And we'll make sure we let everybody know when that's going to happen. Bruce and Glenda, you're kind of isolated down there in Florida too. What the uh, what do you what do you hear? What are you the people you talk to on a daily basis? What's everybody want to see happen? And how you're going to get through all this? Talking to anybody, this is a real pleasure for us to be able to hear other people's point of views because 
I mean, you're talking across the street from everyone. So this is great. I feel like I'm really getting to hear some great views and uh, I appreciate what you all are saying. And I agree, This I, I don't really feel there's that much of a comparison with 9-11 because as was brought up, that's yeah. something that happened in New York, affected the, a couple states there. But we, we were all sad, we were mad, but we knew it was going to end in a week and you know we were gonna move on. This is totally different. Yeah. Mike, right. Mike, Mike Reeves, you've got a vested interest in all this because it's your, uh, your occupation and your job too. What, uh, what do you hope happens? I know what I hope happens, but I think it's uh, overly optimistic to hope anything. I, I'm mentally prepared to not cover sports in this calendar year. I'm just mentally prepared to not see hockey again. We don't have an NBA squad team, so I don't worry about that. I do a lot of high school uh, broadcast, uh, over 150 to 175 a year on the high school level. I, I can see high schools not being able to play. I can see schools struggling to go back in session come August and September like they're supposed to. You're, they're, you're, we should say you're, you're a retired school teacher too, so you have, you know, yep, that, and, you, know, you know that perspective as well. And so with those things being said, uh, you know, you mentioned that it is, it is an occupation. I, I've done it as a part-time job for almost 30 years now. Um, it, you, you do take a hit. I, I enjoy the income that comes from covering these games as well. And that's, that's out for a good part of this year. And I, like I said, I'm mentally just trying to prepare that there won't be anything to cover on any level, whether it be college, pro, high school, and then anything that I do get to cover, I'm going to consider it a bonus for the 2020 calendar year. That's about the only way to approach it. And, and I don't want it to have to play out that way, but, uh, Guys, I think it's the reality that it may be more likely that that happens than, than that we come back and see sports on any level the rest of this this calendar year. I think it's the only way you can view it. Patty, maybe we kind of have to extend our expectations that that's going to happen and I'd be surprised if it happens before that, right? Yeah, I kind of agree with that. I think that, um, and you know, I, I think of economic, you know, repercussions of all this too. You know, yeah, I'm a season ticket holder. I had a trip booked to London. I'm not going to get the refund on the flight. I, you know, I'm going to have to use that somehow. I don't know if they're going to read, but I think that I, I just don't, my brother's an official, my, you know, there, I have a lot of people that do a lot of stuff with sports in my, in my, you know, group of family and friends and stuff. And I agree. I don't, I don't see anything for the rest of the year either. I, maybe that's just my expectation and anything we get is a bonus, but that's what I'm setting myself up for too, is that we're not going to have anything for the rest of the year. Well, I think if, if that happens at one o'clock on every Saturday afternoon, we need to have a conference call just to keep Brian Gardner from doing something that he shouldn't do. <laughs> He'll be on the golf course. <laughs> That's probably true. Well, yeah. Uh, Bob, thank you for this opportunity. It has been a pleasure to all you folks that we're talking with. This is so cool. Mark Burns, I have been to Sydney and <laughs> Melbourne with a USA baseball team. It was so charming to hear your voice. <laughs> Thank I you. I have been to your city. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't think there's going to be a baseball season. I'm prepared for it mentally. I won't be very happy. I will be extremely disappointed if there's no college football just because of my passion for the Tigers and then the SEC. But boy, And I've heard rumors about there could be a winter and spring college football season. But I, I just don't know what's going to happen until next year. I'll be real upset. I'm tired of watching police shows and some of the other things on TV. You know, like right now, to my left on my TV is Fox Sports replaying a Cardinal World Series from 2011. So you get little doses of that, but this is, uh, this is horrible. But we know the health ramifications, so we'll see what happens. For, for those of you who don't know Brian Gardner, there are times when he has games on three different televisions and one on his computer at the same time. So it's, he definitely well, is. Yeah, I've had him. Uh, I've had him on the TV, on the computer, and on my phone. Uh, and, and and I got to mention, going back a long time ago, you people have no idea what my dealing with Rob Rains has meant to me. <laughs> I used to listen to him all the time on KMOX. And now I'm friends with this man. This man has made my life wonderful in the last seven or eight years. I am so grateful to oh, him Brian, for becoming very friends kind. and the opportunities he's start got started for me and just the things that's happened and, and then this. 
this is wonderful, and I appreciate everything, Rob. He he went to the uh, college ch championship football game this year as the super fan. He won a contest to uh, to uh, be the super fan of the wow. of the country for his Mizzou uh, Tigers. So he got down to, got got to go to New Orleans and watch the uh, championship game. My uh, nephew attends Clemson, and I just texted him and asked him about summer school, and he didn't know. He as far as he knew, there were still um, classes at Clemson this summer, but okay. Anyway. Oh. Just Mark Burns, I want, the final word. I, have, so. I want the final word to go to Mark Burns, and I want to ask you a question. Do they miss baseball in Australia? I mean, is it what is the Major League Baseball? I know from talking with Jake, they only get a few games on TV, and they're early in the morning. Is it is it kind of an afterthought down there that all this mess is going on that we're talking about uh, every day up here? Yeah, look, you know, the, the, the diehard baseball community miss baseball. Um, you know, we've all got MLB TV. We, we're just crazy about it. We miss it greatly. Um, and but you know even even right now where everything's shut down, um, yeah, our local baseball clubs got batting cages, and we got kids down there with their mums and dads throwing balls at them all the time. So it's uh, it's still very close to our hearts. But yeah, we miss we miss watching it. We really do. I, I think that's something that we all share. So guys, hey, I really appreciate everybody joining us today. Have a good evening. Try to stay busy. Try to stay home and stay healthy. But we'll get to we'll we'll do this again soon. But we'll uh, we'll talk about baseball even if we can't play everybody. So appreciate Thank you, everybody Rob. joining us. Thank and you, guys. Everybody can Thank you, look at the mute moon. It's beautiful tonight. So take a look at the moon. Take a yes. look at the moon.